Yes, you can start. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, uh, it is pleasure for me to introduce Professor Boyan Siraco from the University of Rio in Brazil, who will speak about basic elliptic estimates with optimized constants and applications to the qualitative theory of elliptic theories. Please, the microphone Thank and the screen are yours. Thank you very much, Gian, and uh, really very strong thanks to the organizers who invited me to speak to this uh, very high level conference dedicated to one, to one of the best mathematicians of the 20th century. So, uh, how's the... Uh, pl louder, please. Uh, ah, okay, now, now, okay. So, is it better? A bit better. A bit better. Okay, now? Yeah. Okay, we are better now? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep, so, Okay, so this is uh, one or two, depending on the time that I have joint works that I'm going to talk about, made in uh, uh, joint with Philippe Souffle from Paris. And uh, well, it's about uh, some elliptic estimates, such as actually Harnack inequalities with optimized constants and the applications we found to two problems in the qualitative theory of elliptic PDE, namely the Vasquez strong maximum principle and the Landis conjecture. Well, so to quickly review the setting, let's think we have a real valued uniformly elliptic second order operator, which might be in the general divergence or in the general non-divergence form. Actually, I'm gonna think of linear operators, but uh, one may have even more general non-linear, for instance, how many tonic can be Bellman or is X operators or so extremo operators. And in these uh, frameworks, we are going to consider weak solutions or super solutions, depending on the case, which of course, which naturally means weak Sobolev if the operator is in divergence form and uh, viscosity solutions if the operator is in non-divergence form. So let me just uh, fix the notations as it's very usual. We are going to call A the second order coefficients, B the first order coefficients, and C the zero order coefficients here in the operator. Well, so we are going to put some uh, standard assumptions that, uh, that are not optimal for that to happen, but uh, that's not the goal to get exactly optimal regularity assumptions. So we are assuming that we have a uniform elliptic operator we need to say continuity, of course, less is enough, like DMO for the uh, second order coefficients in the non-divergence case. And we assume that the coefficients are, say, locally in the back spaces, which make possible for weak solutions to satisfy generalized maximum principle. Stampak here in the divergence case, or Alexander Wackelman in the non-divergence, and the Harnack inequality, which in this case are the first order coefficients are in some LQ for Q bigger than N and the zero order coefficients is in some LP for P bigger than N over two or bigger than some constant between N over two and N, which is such that uh, for the case of a non-divergence form operator, such a number is known to exist and permits the validity of the generalized maximum principle. Well, uh, so I'm going to start speaking a little bit about the strong maximum principle. Well, this is extremely basic result. And it says that if we have a non-negative super solution, one of its forms, of course, and which vanishes at one point, then it vanishes everywhere, right? Or if you have a subsolution and a super solution which touch each other, the subsolution touches a super solution from below, then this might only happen if these two functions coincide. Okay, that's the linear form of uh, the strong maximum principle. Oh, let me let me discuss a little bit this linearity. So say we take this linear equation of a portion of u minus u. So what this thing says is that if you take a positive function which vanishes in one point, there's no space to put under it its proportion, right? Except if it is the zero function. Uh, and one may wonder, what is the best hypothesis one, one, one may put, uh, put here on this U? I mean, can we take something which grows less quickly 
that goes to zero less quickly when u goes to zero. And it immediately is obvious that if we take any power of u, which is uh, small, with power smaller than one, here u is small, right? So u to the p is much bigger than u. Then this result, the strong maximum principle is not true for any p smaller than one. And there are trivial examples like function C2 function, C2 radial functions, which just power functions. So, and what was noticed by Vasquez in 1984 is that actually the threshold is not linearity. I mean, the zero order dependence may be non Lipschitz. So there, there, there is a threshold which is between u and u to the p for any p smaller than one for the validity of the strong maximum principle. Right, and here's the Vasquez result. Yep, so the threshold is strictly between u and u to the p. And so to imagine we have a function f, which is say zero at zero, non-decreasing and positive. Then the right hypothesis under which the strong maximum principle is valid for this nonlinear inequality is that uh, one over square root of the primitive of this function f is uh, divergent, is uh, divergent as, I mean, the uh, has the integral that is divergent at zero, right? And the main and actually only example that I know that's uh, had any use is the function, the s log s function, right? So it is not a linear function. It is a slightly worse, but you can go to s log s to power a for a smaller or equal than two, right? So this is, a function that satisfies this hypothesis as it non Lipschitz is zero. It's derivative, it's like log s or log s to square, right? And uh, that's, uh, that's like the main example that one might think of for the validity of this uh, uh, function. Well, just a remark if uh, that uh, this integral condition is not exactly related, but very similar to the so-called Keller-Rosserman condition for existence of entire subsolutions. But there, the integral is at infinity, just an observation. Now, OK, so there's been a really, after the starting with Vasquez results, there's been a very, very large amount of work on extending this maximum principle to more general, first weak solutions, and then uh, more general equations, so like quasi-linear, fully nonlinear, also singular degenerate that is based, that is modeled on the P Laplacian for P bigger or smaller than two elliptic operators. I cannot quote, of course, it's a huge, it's a huge field, but I will just note that there is a whole book that is essentially devoted to this kind of result, written by Patricia Pucci and James Serin, called The Maximum Principle. Uh, that uh, studies this kind of uh, maximum principle, the Vasquez maximum principle, for really very general divergence form operators, like uh, divergence of A of X U uh, gradient of U equal to B X U gradient of U. And among other things, they show also that this integral condition here, that's this condition I'm gonna call that the integral condition, is uh, necessary for the validity of the strong maximum principle for such nonlinear inequalities. And also the fact that the function is non-decreasing, of course, may be taken only some neighborhood of uh, zero. And even in some cases, some very particular cases, that latter uh, non-decreasing condition can be removed. Okay, also there's been uh, some works on uh, non-divergence form in even fully nonlinear operators related to the validity of the same strong maximum principle. Well, one feature that's been always uh, present in the previous works is that operators needed to have bounded coefficients. I mean, the, like all of the coefficients of these A, B, C needed to be bounded functions. And that's related to the method of proof. So let me, to explain that, uh, recall the standard proof of the strong maximum principle, which is the most frequent one that we teach in an introductory PE course. So first you prove that the operator we say the right condition on its zero order term satisfies the comparison principle. 
then you construct a radio subsolution of the nonlinear inequality in say some annuals with different values on the two sides of the well of the of, the, of its boundary and also such that there is the normal derivative of the of this subsolution does not vanish on the boundary so essentially then you can use that function as a comparison function and it deduces the hop flamma and once the hop flamma is available also you can prove the strong maximum principle by a contradiction of continuity connectedness argument Okay, so where does this integral condition appear in this uh, in the in the second in the second step, right? There, essentially, what do we do? We solve an ODE, and for that ODE, we need radio or even constant coefficients. For instance, just to give an example, take this inequality just has one uh, coefficient here, and how would you get a radio subsolution that has these properties? you replace this equation by just you replace b by its minimum and you need this minimum to be finite right and you solve this autonomous equation here you just write it in the radio form and you solve the ode with values zero and one in some interval on the two sides of an interval and it turns out that the derivative of the of the radio solution here does not vanish precisely. I mean, at the boundary, at the extremal points of the interval, radio interval, does not vanish precisely under the integral condition, under the Vasquez integral conditions. So that's how you, that's that, that that is the essentially, with one exception, the way Vasquez maximum principle has been proved before. And of course, this argument requires bounded coefficients. So, well, this ODE approach does not seem to work with unbounded coefficients. So the, it, it was open whether the, the Vasquez maximum principle would be true for operators with unbounded coefficients. And that's exactly what our work is. I mean, one of the, our result is, we managed to prove that the Vasquez strong maximum principle holds not exactly under the Vasquez uh, integral condition, but for nonlinearities which are as in the main example. That is, if we have a super, uh, super solution of such an inequality, and we assume that f is no worse at zero than s log s square, then uh, the strong maximum principle is true. I mean, I've written here essentially infimum because you may not be continuous in the divergence case, but what it means is that if it vanishes at one point, it vanishes everywhere. So the strong maximum principle is true under the for all functions that are like in the main example at zero, s log s square, which are essentially all the all examples that they know about the use of this strong maximum principle or like that. Well, just to, to give one application, which is more like actually we came to realize that this problem, this, this was something to do, is uh, in the following. When one studies this, this is like a different talk, but I'm just gonna give a slide to give an application of, uh, of that result, is think of the uh, Dirichlet problem for an operator, like we take a linear operator, and add a natural growth term, like a quadratic growth in the gradient, and ask when can we solve this boundary value problem? I mean, this is, there's a huge theory about that. In particular, in the 80s, 90s, there were a lot of works in the cases when this operator here is what they call coercive, which means that C has the nice sign. And in the last 10 years, there's been a number of works for the bad sign, when C doesn't have the right sign, when actually this problem does not have uniqueness. And in a paper with my ex uh, PhD student, Gabriele Norberg, we looked at this kind of problems, in particular for non-divergence form operators. And well, trying to prove existence or multiplicity results for such an equation essentially requires proving sorts of a priori bounds for the solutions, right? And in that study, we, the only way we could prove one of the crucial a priori bounds for solutions of such a problem 
was make an exponential change. This is very typical, but, and then it turns out that you need a strong maximum principle for this kind of inequality. Exactly you log u on one side. And since there was no uh, strong maximum principle for unbounded coefficients, we needed to restrict all our work to bounded first and zero order coefficients because of this uh, necessity of having a strong maximum principle for that. And this result I'm just showing here, essentially, for instance, extends all these results uh, we got to the natural uh, framework of operators with only integrable coefficients, of course, with the right integrability. Well, this is just the observation on application of that. There are others, actually. So uh, a couple of more remarks on that. Uh, the, the method of proof co is completely uh, uh, independent of any monotonicity assumptions on the function f, so we remove that too. And here, of course, appears an uh, obvious open problem is whether it is possible to prove the, uh, the, the, the same result, but under the full integral hypothesis, right? We, we have a little bit weaker hypothesis by saying just f at zero is y s log s squared. Would it be true if uh, the same thing with unbounded coefficients, if we just assume that uh, the integral condition is true? Well, it's not completely clear because that uh, hypothesis is at first glance quite an ODE one. Still should probably be true. Uh, so how about the method of proof? Well, the method of proof is relating to uh, a use of the weaker knack inequality in which the constant is optimized with respect to the size of the domain and the norms of the wall or the coefficients of the operator. So what do I mean? So let me recall, uh, luckily this conference is uh, specialist. I don't need to explain what the weaker knack inequality is or what it's useful for. So that's the usual form of the weaker knack inequality and the CWH will be the constant that appears in it for a given positive super solution. And uh, what we have, it depends on, uh, on the constants that naturally relate it and the uh, zero and first order Lebesgue norms and the size of a ball group. And uh, what we are gonna use is that this can be optimized with respect to these norms. Yeah, I think the weaker knack inequality goes back to the George Moser Trudinger in the non-divergence framework, Kirov and Safonov in the non uh, in the non divergence case extended viscosity solutions then by Farelic Farelic Abel and Goiki switch for unbounded coefficients. So it uh, the weaker knack inequality is a quantification of the strong maximum principle. Of course if u is not zero this thing is here is a positive value so u is strictly positive so it's a quantification or a growth length right and as such it implies uh, Hilder regularity. Yep, and it has a non-homogeneous version. I mean, if there's a right-hand side, in the right-hand side here appears an LP norm. It's always a little bit in a bigger domain. So what we need to optimize here is this C. And also, it is also important, I mean, you know, it usually in books, this norm here, this LP norm here, appears like that in something bigger, B2R, B4R, BR plus one, whatever. But this is not exactly natural because if one thinks, say, f is a constant, say f is one, and if p is infinity, one always have every infinity norm which is one, independently of r. But if you take LP norms, they would go to infinity as r go to infinity. So this norm needs to be a little bit improved in order to deal to make it a local one. And uh, to that, it's pretty useful to write uh, in terms of uniformly local Lebesgue space that uh, sort of quite used in parabolic theory. So our function is in LS uniformly local if simply it's uh, in LS in any ball with say fixed size across the domain where you take it. And then uh, we take these constants, they are pretty standard. Uh, scaling constants, if say this R here is infinity, which is correspond to coefficients that are bounded, then this would be one, this would be one half. And then we look at the following quantity, which is just the 
LQ and LP norm of the first and zero order coefficients with this uh, scaling power. Let's take kind of these scaling powers here. So this is just one in case Q is infinity and this is one half in case P is uh, infinity. And then uh, the actually the one can, one can see that the uh, we are not constant is bounded above by an exponential this times this quantity times the size of the domain r where you take the inequality this is obviously it cannot be improved i mean you just may write an ode and you see that uh, the solutions necessarily will be exactly with this growth in their weaker neck but the point is that this is the best for any operator in any dimension and once we have this, yeah, we can optimize also the, yeah, that's an optimal variant of the, yeah, the, the proof is uh, easy to understand. I mean, you just take this M, you take a ball of size one over M, rescale it to a ball of size one, you get a new operators with coefficients that have norms more than one, then you scale back and then you cover with overlapping balls. You need a Harnack chain, which you optimize with respect to the geometry of the domain, and you get, uh, after some work, this inequality here, this optimal constant in the weak Harnack inequality. One can optimize also the local maximum principle, and then uh, we get uh, powers actually of this M, not exponentials. And these two together give the full Harnack, again, with an optimized constant, which is an exponential of MR. So a uh, quick idea of the proof of the strong maximum principle of the Vasquez type strong maximum principle. Okay, so let's think of uh, the non-linearity, which is something like log of u to a power times u, and let's think of this log of u to a power y k zero on the coefficient. Of course, you cannot do that because you don't know if it is in any Lebesgue space. It can go to zero very, it can go to infinity very quickly because you become zero exactly around the point where you look. But imagine there was something like that, and you write the corresponding pro the corresponding quantity quantity here. This a for this c log of u to the a in uh, your space. Say p is equal to infinity here, and you write the weak Harnack inequality, and then you see that essentially here the infimum of u is zero on some very small ball. You have to choose the right r. The infimum of u is zero, and this thing here is infinity, and so this is an indetermination of sort of infinity times zero, and you can prove that under the conditions we have, this uh, indetermination is resolved in favor of the zero. So this is it. So that's the, the idea of the proof. Well, another open problem is uh, the following. Uh, well, we proved the strong maximum principle for a nonlinear operator using the weaker knock inequality with an optimized constant, but for the linear operation, for the linear equation, we essentially linearize. One may wonder whether there is a Harnack inequality directly for the nonlinear inequality, or even for the just for the equality. There's only one result that I know in that vein, to Vesa due to Vesa Yulin a few years ago. For pure divergence form, no zero, no no lower order coefficients, only divergence form, and then he proves the full result that you may imagine be that needs to be true for as a generalization of the Harnack inequality that one over square root of the primitive of this function integrated from the infimum to supremum is bounded independently of f. Right, the proof is difficult. Uses the divergence structure uses a denebetu trudinger approach, which consists in writing an ODE for volumes of super level set. So another open problem is, can we generalize prove such an inequality for general op second order operators, say non-divergence forms, say Pucci, or operators with all of the coefficients. One may imagine that some iteration proof in the standard vein of proving the Harnack inequality may work for nonlinear equations. That's another open problem. Okay, let me now move to the second problem here. I have a little, several minutes here. So a question by uh, Kondratif and Landis, or 
I mean, first time it appears in 88 to my knowledge, but I think it goes back much, much earlier to that, is whether just take very basic linear equation, standard Schrodinger operator with a bounded potential in an exterior domain in Rn. Is it true that its solutions cannot decay super exponentially at infinity? This means, is there a constant which depends only on the L infinity norm of this coefficient here, such that if u converges to zero more quickly than exponential of minus mx, then u needs to be zero. And even though this is a very old question, it is still open for real solutions of such an equation, except in some particular cases. Uh, some variants of this conjecture. What about the case when we don't have an exterior domain, but the whole space? It is also still open. There's a weaker conjecture which says the solutions cannot decay quite exponential minus x to one plus something. This has only recently been proved for n equal to two. And of course, more general operators. Right. And actually it turns out that for complex solution, it was disproved, disproved one ago. The right decay is exponential minus x to four third. It's been, uh, there's been a lot of developments in that vein, but they use Kalman type estimates, which do not distinguish between real and complex solutions. This is in two dimensions, of course. So there's no hope to prove the conjecture in real case by such techniques. Now, in the recent years, there's been a few works. I have to go quicker now. Uh, so Kenick, Sylvester and Wang a few years ago looked at this problem in R2 for some operators with uh, signs and coefficients and proved that at uh, each sphere, there's a point at which is u is like exponential of minus R log R or in exterior domains R log R squared. So this is like you prove the Kenick conjecture, the one that you, the solutions can't be exponential R to one plus, x plus epsilon for any epsilon. And these works are for two dimensions and equations in divergence form. And they assume that the work over coefficients of the operator are such that it satisfies the maximum principle on bounded subdomains. This is an essential hypothesis. Like the generalized thing a value in Rn needs to be positive for zero. Walker Rossi recently proved that on the same condition on the first thing and value, for non-divergence form operators with bounded coefficient, the result is true. That uses the fact that uh, the sum exponential minus mx for large m is a subsolution. This uses that the coefficients need to be bounded. There are also other works with different techniques in the same vein on bounded coefficients. So yeah, in a very recent work by Lugun of Malini Kuanari Refiri and Fodio Razarov, they prove that actually this is the only work that does not make a hypothesis on the first eigenvalue, on the validity of the maximum principle, is that the result is true, at least the stronger form is true in R2. And the decay is no worse than exponential x square root of uh, log x. This uses techniques which are really two dimensional. High dimension stiff sweep is an open question. Some particular results for unbounded coefficients are available, but they are under conditions that functions, the coefficients are integrable at infinity, which is a very strong condition of course, this is a decay conditions on the, on the coefficients. And then one manages to prove results that are even stronger, that actually exponential of x to a power which is smaller than one is excluded. That it's a, it's a different uh, type of result. And our contribution is to prove then the run this conjecture in any dimension for unbounded world order coefficients, which are only uniformly local and integrable, and then include the bounded coefficients in a very particular case. Under that hypothesis that we do not know at all how to avoid, we strongly that the maximum principle is true in any bounded subdomain of, our spa of the space or of the domain. It's the generalized first eigen value in the full Rn or exterior domain is uh, not negative. Yeah, this is, uh, and this is the theorem, which says that if F L satisfies the maximum principle, then any solution, actually we can even quantify the constant here that implies the Landis conjecture. It is something, some constant that's uniform in terms of ellipticity times this quantity that we already saw, okay? 
well, that's, uh, I guess I need to conclude. It's an approach that unifies the treatment of these two classical problems and has the following two main advantages that it gives answers for operators that uh, even locally unbounded for all the coefficients in a number of situations where previous results required bounded ingredients. The one this conjecture actually wasn't proved in cases that uh, two in the, for unbounded coefficients. So and even for fully non even we managed with this was completely open. And we treat it, the, the method treats simultaneously divergence and non-divergence form equations because it's based only on the Harnack inequality and it's valid for one or the other. So essentially, and the proofs are short. I mean, it's, uh, so that's, uh, that's what we do. Okay, I don't have time to this. So I'm going to thank you now. And once more, thank you for inviting me to this conference. Okay, let us thank for the very interesting uh, talk. Are there some questions, remarks? Uh, I want to take the opportunity to excuse myself for losing the connection a few months ago and uh, having to go out by the end of the previous talk. Uh -huh, sorry, uh, just a short question. Can you get uh, the same strong maximum principle in the parabolic case? I do not know. I'm not sure. I do not uh, sorry, know. could you repeat? I do not know. I do not know, really. Uh -huh, okay, thanks. <laughs> it's a good question, of course. Other questions? It seems so. So let us thank once again Boyan Sirako for the very interesting lecture. Thank you again. For my